Welcome back to the Compass Mining Podcast. My name is Jarrett, and on this episode, I'm excited to share with you two kind of behind-the-scenes looks at conversations I had this past spring with our Director of People, Jen Zimzak, as well as our Chief Mining Officer, Shannon Squires. So to kick off the episode, let's check in with Jen Zimzak, our Director of People. My name is Jarrett, and today I'm here with Jen, the Director of People. And Jen, I've been dying to ask you this question. If you could just talk about the evolution of Compass, its culture, its growth, its ups and downs. It's a startup, right? There's going to be good days, going to be maybe not so good days. Mm. And you've been with Compass since 2021. If you could just talk about what that evolution looks like from your kind of angle as director of people. Oh my gosh, what a ride. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, a roller coaster is kind of putting it lightly, but um, we have this core group of people that have been with us um, through all the challenges. And I think what's really important to understand is those people who have been with us through that time um, is true loyalty, but also true faith and leadership and true trust in the vision and what we're doing. We changed from uh, morals and values to CEOs to board directors. Um, so we've seen it all. We've done um, you know, a, a tripling the workforce size to um, a reduction in force, a reduction in force. Um, yeah, so it, the, the journey has been anything but uh, monotonous. Um, it has been an absolutely incredible ride. And we are just so proud to be able to this year tell our story of where, what we've been through, but also kind of where we're going. We don't do that well enough. And I think that's kind of our goal this year is to kind of tell Compass's story. So you hit on it, right? Where are we going? And I'm sure that there is, you know, a company scripted ways that we could talk about this, our vision and all these things. And it might be corporate speak. If you could just say it as if you were trying to explain it to, you know, you have children. If you were sitting down like, hey, mom, like what's the company trying to do this year? Mm -hmm. How would you say that? Um, we are setting the industry standard for owning and operating sites. Um, I think it's really important to get that standard set so that others can follow. We are leaders in this industry in, in so many ways, but I think it's important that we recognize our, our true skill set is our operations team, is our facility management team. We know what we're doing. We are industry experts there. So I think, it's, I think that's what our number one focus is, and we want to kind of shine on that. As we look forward, we're now kind of in the start of a bull run. Mm -hmm. As we get into 2025 and even the rest of this year, from a hiring perspective, what are you hoping for? And I say this knowing that Compass, like every single company in the Bitcoin mining industry and in Bitcoin in general, are probably going to continue to grow and look to build their team. What are the things that are super top of mind, the top three things that a candidate should probably have if they're interested in joining Compass Mining? Yeah, that's a great question, too. Um, I would say some of the skill sets we look at, um, aside from having passion about Bitcoin and the industry itself and where it's going and, and what it can do for the future, um, you know, a skill set that we really look for with what our focus is for 2024 is that technical background and not necessarily in Bitcoin. It can be anything from, you know, electrical, HVAC, um, just knowledge of taking apart and putting back together computers, um, hardware, working with your hands. So um, that's really a really great skill set to have when, as we move forward in 2024. In 2025, we're really looking for, um, you know, site operations, facility operations, site management, people that have, um, have been in the industry, the power industry, the energy industry, that can really help us with the grid and understanding power and moving forward and building out our own site. So I think that's really important long term. Excellent. Those are great things that I don't think are maybe always thought of when you're on LinkedIn and you're thinking, how am I going to update my resume? How am I going to be able to be relevant in the future? If the future is so digital and I have skills with my hands, how am I going to be able to add value? Absolutely. And Bitcoin is the perfect amalgamation of both the physical and the digital world as far as its growth. For right now, as a culture, how do you see Bitcoin mining differently as a culture than maybe another tech company? What are the things that you as the director of people are trying to inculcate into the company? What are the things that you're trying to insert and inject and just make sure that this is who Bitcoin mining is, but more specifically, this is who Compass Mining is? Because I do know as a Compass employee, we do things a little bit differently. And I think it's the difference that makes all the difference and makes us who we are. Absolutely. And that is number one thing that we are so proud of at Compass um, is what we have been through and where we are today as a team. The culture at uh, Compass Mining is unlike any I I've ever been with. And everyone says that coming in and who is still with us. And I think it has to do with individuality, 
but also the comfort of being who you are. That's what we want, the authenticity, the autonomy. Um, we want the people to come in and feel like, not it's not a family, but man, do we work great together. Um, we trust each other. We wear multiple hats. No one is too good for a role or I'm sorry, that's not my role. I don't wanna do that. Um, no, we, we all jump in because again, it's a shared vision. We know what Compass is doing. We know what Bitcoin is doing, which is so important. So that's again, I think what separates us from a corporate culture or another, another startup culture. You as the director of people work very closely with Cameron, who is the director of continuous improvement. If you could talk a little bit about how that fits into shaping the culture, because as we've talked about, the more educated every individual person can continue to, to be, you know, the continuous learning aspect, mm -hmm. you know, a rising tide lifts all boats. So how does that fit into the overall company culture? Oh my gosh, so many ways. So many ways from um, that continuous education. So we're backfilling roles, right? We wanna make sure that people understand what other departments and other individuals do. So Cameron is a really key part of making sure that people understand the processes that we have. Uh, secondly, I would say that um, it's what Cameron does really good is um, just being that voice of an advocacy for the employees coming to me, being a li liaison between myself and the employees and uh, the leadership team. Um, yeah, he, does, he just does a fantastic job. And to follow up the conversation I had with Jen, let's go ahead and transition to hear from our chief mining officer, Shannon Squires. My name is Jarrett, and today I am here with Shannon Squires, who is Compass Mining's chief mining officer. Shannon, how are you? I am phenomenal. Excellent. Let's go ahead and rewind the clock a little bit. When did you start with Compass, and how have you seen mining kind of evolve since then? Because as we know, in 2023, we saw the hash double. So more, you know, the mining industry itself is growing. So if you could talk to us about joining Compass and then really what you've seen as an evolution leading up to where we are today. Yeah, so I joined Compass, uh, I guess just over a year and a half ago, getting somewhere near that two year mark with Compass. Been in the Bitcoin mining space for a while. Um, I watched as Compass kind of came to fruition, like from early days while they were out, you know, Thomas was running around on the Telegram spaces and things like that where you know, kind of putting the pieces together. And on the backside, I knew a lot about how Compass operated because there are a lot of other brokers in the industry who tried to do similar things. Mm -hmm. uh, most of them didn't have the ability to reach and aggregate retail like Compass did um, or be able to grow and create that critical mass that Compass did. Um, so I worked with a handful of other ventures before then. And then eventually, when you know, came down to it. I decided I wanted to come join Compass because I knew from the outside looking in, I knew a lot about them, you know, how they worked, how they, you know, actually operated on the backside and saw a lot of value in where they could be in the future. Um, there were not a lot of people continuing to go down that uh, hosting path or co-location type situation in the fashion that Compass was doing it. They were the marketplace, so much more like an Amazon of Bitcoin mining. And I saw a lot of value in where it could go in the future. So joined Compass about a year and a half ago Primary focus was new site procurement. So whether that was you know rack ready hosting sites or greenfield sites, um, you know Compass's bread and butter was you know getting capacity at sites that were already rack ready, being able to place miners and then either sell them turnkey or bringing clients miners into co-location or hosting. Uh, so I dealt in that world for a little while and started getting into more on the procurement side of the infrastructure. So transformers, PDUs, you know, and then also down the power development side. I then started to explore a lot more paths of how to uh, get Compass more control over the situation. So one of the biggest problems as someone who's contracting space is you're dependent on a host who's going to operate the site. They're going to maintain the site. They're going to take care of your miner. They're going to be responsive. They're going to actually care that your miner's hashing or not. And a lot of the third parties we've worked with, as you've seen, you know, Compass start you know, with a lot of you know, entities that we worked with, and now we work with a lot less was then refining and, you know, you know kind of like getting it down to like, hey, these are the good ones. These are the ones we want to continue to grow with and expand with uh, while getting rid of some of the ones that didn't quite meet our needs. Um, at the same time, or, you know, probably about six months ago, we started doing a lot more of our own operations and owning more of the infrastructure. So the, the actual data centers, the, you know, modular container pieces, the, you know, like transformers, that type of thing and then operating the site. So whether that's a third party built site and develop site that we come in and operate for ourselves um, or some maybe 
the operator didn't have the experience we had. And so we were able to go in and, you know, start operating to create better uptime for our clients and a better experience for our clients. And then that led into, hey, we're pretty good at this operating thing. So now we're actually operating sites for third parties that have no compass miners or compass clients there. Um, because they see that we can do it well, we can you know increase their uptime, and we have so much industry experience from being in so many sites in the U.S. and Canada, uh, and seeing how things operate, learning all the pitfalls, and being able to grow from there. So I guess that's kind of how I got a little bit of all of it. We have spoken a little bit about the past and how we got up to where we are today. Talk to me about 2024. We have the halving coming up in just weeks from now. Not sure when people are going to be watching this, but the halving is still on the horizon. We have Bitcoin seeing institutional interest around the world globally. How is that going to impact mining? The story in my head is that obviously more and more hash is going to happen. More and more miners are going to come online. How is that going to change things for Compass and probably provide great opportunity for Compass and just Bitcoin mining as an industry? It's interesting. I've been through a few halvings now. Right. And I had different expectations with each one. Um, the first one I went through or, you know, the first kind of bull like crash was between 2017, 2018, where we went into a bull market. Uh, that experience was probably the worst of, you know, since in the next bull market in, you know, uh, crashing after 2020. And now we're coming into the you know bull run of this situation. And each one has been different uh, from whether it's a Bitcoin price appreciation or it's difficulty appreciation. Mm -hmm you know, the growth of the hash rate. And that's one thing that's interesting about Bitcoin mining is we're essentially always short difficulty or hash rate, right? Where as difficulty or hash rate increases, our ability to get blocks before someone else or share the reward pool is decreasing over time. And so we're always racing to, you know, find whether it's a more efficient miner or a more cost-effective power source or a, you know, a solution to kind of fight back against that difficulty always adjusting. And then when the halving comes, the block reward is cut in half. Um, but one thing that's been really interesting over the last year has been watching uh, the growth of the fee market within Bitcoin. I didn't expect it to happen this soon, but we've actually seen the fee market equal what the reward was going to be and exceed it in some situations. And so now we have a very robust fee market. Some of that due to, you know, things that people may not want to have on the blockchain, whether that's pictures of wizards or <laughs> whatever that they're stuffing into those blocks. Um, but it has developed this fee market, which is great for Bitcoin mining. So the reality is it's supporting the continued growth of this network. The network is important to make sure it's grown all over the world as many places as possible, just to have it more distributed and operated by more people. So the, the higher the block reward or higher the uh, fees get faster, the better that's going to be for minor growth at the same time as we're losing that other block subsidy. Um, this one is also different because we actually like hit a new Bitcoin all-time high before the halving. So normally you have this period of time in which the price isn't really going up, the halving's coming, you might even see the price drop into the halving, and you don't really see a new all-time high until like six to 12 months post-halving. So that's really where you see this hard crunch. And historically, there's been like a three-month period of like hard crunch. You see 80 megawatt Bitcoin mining farms just shutting off because they mm. can't pay their power bills. Um, but more historically, like, uh, like Chinese Bitcoin miners, they used to just save a bunch of Bitcoin, try to time the top, sell a bunch, prepay power, or at least have the cash on hand to pay their power during the rough months so they didn't have to shut off. Um, so there's always different strategies and balancing acts going into that. This has been like the most mild one so far. Like I've been waiting for this hard crunch to happen. And it hasn't happened yet. Um, obviously, we see like, you know, older S19s and creeping into the J pros. It's kind of iffy, like how viable would these be post having, which now is like, okay, how much will Bitcoin price appreciate? I don't know. Uh, so that's kind of the interesting part of this. As far as Compass goes, like we're always trying to optimize for our clients. Um, Compass has a very, very small amount of self mining miners. And most of those miners are actually used as temporary units when a client is having a prolonged uh, downtime due to a relocation or repairs or something that's not necessarily in anybody's control. Um, so outside of those, we don't really host ourselves or have our own miners because we want to make sure that we're not competing with our clients for the best situation. So to make the best situation, you know, we started as a company that depended on a lot of third parties to basically do everything. And then we took over, you know, owning a little bit of the infrastructure, doing the operations. And now, you know, the next step is to be able to, you know, build and own our own infrastructure and start from the ground up because then we don't rely on those third parties where we have the potential risk of failures we've seen in the past, um, which you can dig up on the news, all that fun stuff. Uh, but, you know, Compass has been able to 
work through all that adversity and get to a point where it's like, all right, we've made it here. We have this critical mass. We got these clients who want to take care of. We got clients who renew with us regularly. Um, everybody from people with one minor to people with hundreds of minors. Um, and we want to continue supporting them in that fashion. So for us to do that better, we got to own it from the ground up. And that is the next steps with Compass throughout 2024 is how do we remove that third party risk, uh, own more of it ourselves, uh, and then just continue to build, develop, and expand and continue to create this service and marketplace so people can mine who couldn't otherwise mine on their own, um, which is found, you know, they have, whether their power rate's too high or it's, you know, too noisy to run an S19 in their house or their garage um, or whatever balancing act there is, or just trusting us to be able to put them in a good situation when they don't have the knowledge and experience to get into Bitcoin mining themselves, even if they have a significant number of miners. Um, I think that's kind of the balancing act going into 2024. Thanks for taking the time to check out these conversations with Jen and Shannon. And if you enjoyed them, please go ahead and subscribe, whether you're listening on a podcast platform or you're watching us on YouTube. No matter where you listen to us, be sure to follow us on social media on X, formerly Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube at Compass Mining. And we'll see you for the next episode.